Hey guys, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and I am here today. I know it's been a minute. Um, I am going to the Crescent City Depression Glass Show, and it's at a, a convention center called the Pontra Chain Center, and um, I'm pretty psyched. I'm going to go check it out. We'll see what they got. Um, of course, I hit my thrift store this morning because I had to go kind of check out what we had going on, and um, in the spirit of glass, I was like super, super psyched because you know what I found? I found a Tiffany's Voss for $4. So I don't know. I guess like the glass gods are shining on me today and uh, I'm excited to go see what else this I don't know, this show might entail. Uh, these ladies who organized this, actually, I was at a Christmas fair and they solicited me and they were like, hey, <laughs> this was in Christmas time. They were like, if you like glass, you should come to this show. They gave me the card. So I am excited to go check it out. Let's, uh, let's see what we got. Hey guys, it's Denise here in Old Collectibles and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute, but I'm here to share with you some of the items that I picked up at the New Orleans Depression Glass show that occurred over at the Pontra Chain Center that I went to. Uh, it was really fabulous and, um, you know, I had met some of the organizers of that show over the holidays because I would went to a church fair and they had a ton of, of jewelry items. They could see I was interested in jewelry. I bought a whole bunch of jewelry. And so they were like, you know, come to the show. We're doing it in March and there's going to be a lot of jewelry vendors. So I put it on my calendar and it rolled around faster than I was expecting it to, um, but it definitely did not disappoint. You could see there's so much, so many gorgeous pieces of glass, obviously, mostly depression era glass, but there were quite a few jewelry vendors as well. So I picked up some re really, really great goodies I'm going to share with you now. Let's not waste any time. And so the first piece I wanted to share with you is um, this really gorgeous one right here. And uh, this is a vintage or an almost antique um Venetian glass flowered necklace. So you can see here we've got um, molded glass flowers in pink and purple. We've got some green glass accent leaves and then there's beautiful kind of hand-blown uh, elements to this as well. Then we have the matching beads and we've got a barrel clasp closure there. And so this one I thought was actually absolutely stunning. I really looked at it very closely just to make sure there were no chips in the flowers or the glass and I love the color combination on this I thought it was very unusual I feel like I have seen this style of necklace in the past but not necessarily in this color combination so I thought it was just absolutely gorgeous and she had a price for for twenty dollars so I thought that that was a great deal right there um, just given kind of the age of it and the quality and the condition that it was in so I definitely picked that one up and um, that one is absolutely Absolutely lovely I have it currently for sale on my eBay store and I actually have an offer on the item right now I don't know if I'm wanting to accept it it is a fair offer but it's also I know the person is a reseller um, I don't know I'm just waffling on it a little bit because I guess I like the item so much <laughs> so we'll see um, we shall see and then um, I also picked these up these are pretty fabulous uh, these are Judy Lee vintage Judy Lee earrings and uh, we've got some really beautiful oversized prong set 
big glass honkers here and we have some really gorgeous kind of Aurora Borealis detailing on those as well as you know Aurora Borealis was um, something that kind of came around in the 1950s uh, as something that they would kind of coat the rhinestones with just to give them that iridescent look so when you um, find a piece that has an Aurora Borealis coating you know you know you're looking at something that's likely you know like after the 1950s like after 1955 or so so these are gorgeous huge um, clip-on earrings Judy Lee uh, just spectacular and those I believe I paid maybe $12 on um, those are really fabulous and so I have a mix I have a, I've picked up a few um, vintage items uh, but I will say the majority of what I did shop for was contemporary and I'll be showing some of that to you um, soon. Uh, there was one vendor there. She was just a really lovely woman. She she had to be um, probably in her 70s and she had a, a few, a very curated kind of selection of goods and um, the one the one thing that caught my eye there was this set and uh, this is a, a West Germany set and I paid, um, she did give me a discount on everything so I paid $25 for the set and this is just beautiful. You can see here like a like a glass gorgeous with the um, seed pearl detailing on the filigree chain and so wonderful that we have the matching earrings here um, just a really fabulous um, I think it's just a gorgeous set I love the color again I love the coloration on it I've seen this style necklace before typically with an amber glass so I thought this was very different in that it had this beautiful pink glass. I really love the look of that. I think it's probably going to look really fabulous on. The chain is also very nice and long, which is always a benefit when you're dealing with vintage pieces because we always tend to see a lot of shorter pieces. So I got that set with the matching earrings, like I said. So that was really fantastic. And then from that same vendor, I got this pair of... Sarah Coventry earrings and these I only paid I think like six dollars for um, six or seven dollars for and I just I don't see this style very often uh, they're huge they're statement earrings by Sarah Coventry and you can see their gold tone here with a rhinestone detail we have a big beautiful bow kind of spray look uh, clip on earring style so this climbs up your ear like that I mean this is a statement look at the size of these things <sighs> <laughs> really fabulous and I you know I do come across a lot of Sarah Coventry but again I, I have not seen these and so the price was very very fair so I went ahead and I bought those as well and so I got that that's a fabulous pair of earrings let's see so in the video that I showed you with some of the clip of some of the vendors there was one vendor there that you could see that was selling jewelry who had a ton of um he told me he purchased an estate and this person was kind of a uh, serial QVC shopper and so she had purchased mountains and mountains of jewelry and these were pieces that were not even actually worn. So they were still in the box, quite a few of them with their original labels, everything and all the usual suspects when it comes to QVC brands. So there was like a ton of Honora, there was Carolyn Pollock, Relios, there was Nikki Butler, there was Desert Rose Trading, Mine Finds by Jay King. Um, I'm trying to think of what some of the other brands were. Um, I think really those were the main ones. Nolan Miller, he had a lot of Nolan Miller jewelry. Um, like I said, all the typical kind of brands that they sell on QVC. And so his prices were excellent because this guy was looking to get rid of his stock. So uh, I did purchase quite a few number of pieces from him. He gave me a deal on them and it was really because he was trying to move them. He was trying to move these items. So let's go through some of these items and um, I'll show them to you. And like I said, a lot of these are still wrapped in the wrapper. They were still in their boxes. And so this is a beautiful uh, J, J. King Mine Finds. Uh, this is a carnelian beaded faceted necklace here. And here we have a huge uh, jasper bumblebee jasper pendant all in sterling silver and you could see how clean and new the sterling silver it looks like here you could tell this just was never even used and with desert rose trading it'll say drt that's the logo for desert rose trading and what's signature about them is they'll have these oversized end caps usually and these oversized end caps will also be signed desert rose trading so that was really beautiful and I want to say I paid about, I paid $20 for that one. So I did pay up a little bit. These were not like my thrift store usual prices, but um, we're getting a better quality of goods here. And I know I can turn these around for larger dollar amounts. So this one here is a, 
another Desert Rose Mine Fine uh, J. King necklace, and this is a triple triple strand of red coral. And here we have red red coral um, and gaspiite. And I actually have the matching ring of this, like for myself, that I own personally. You can see there, um, really nicely made. Uh, these J. King, the, another signature hallmark of his is this kind of like shepherd's hook that he uses on all of his pieces. And so this really lovely, the red coral, gorgeous, big statement -y pendant. Um, and this one, I think I, I also paid, I want to say I paid 30 for that one. And this one actually sold. I listed a couple of pieces on my eBay and this one sold to a buyer and she purchased two pieces from me. That one and this other coral piece right here. This one I paid $20 for and this is a uh, 10 strand coral necklace. So, you know, just tons and tons of coral, beautiful beads here, 10 strands with the gorgeous end caps. And so these two pieces are both sold and this was a great deal, uh, tw uh, $20 on this one. And I sold both pieces for just over 200. So those will be shipped out tomorrow and go out to their new homes. <laughs> but uh, really beautiful pieces, both of those items. The, I just love um, the coral pieces. They're just like so silky. They feel so lovely on your skin. They're just great, great quality and great pieces of jewelry. Um, this one I have not gotten around to listing and this was also $30 and this is just a really chunky turquoise necklace here and really just beautiful turquoise great coloration on all of these and then again we have the J King mine fine signature hook right there and so I picked up that guy as well and like I said some of these are they were still in the original box I have the um, original zippies that they came in I think oh, this one was like well he gave this guy gave me a, a discount on everything because I purchased so much from him I have to go back and look at what my final amount was, but because um, it wasn't everything that was listed on the price tags that's here. Um, so I got that one as well, the big chunky turquoise. I should leave that one over here. Um, and you know, the mine finds just dependent on the style of the necklace and uh, the types of materials used will determine kind of how desirable they are or how well they sell on the secondary market. So definitely, if you're not familiar with the brand, give it a look on eBay and, and check out the solds and see what, what some of the solds were selling for to give yourself an idea. Um, this one again, also, this one was also 30. And this one is just a beautiful turquoise and soda light beaded necklace here. And we've got this gorgeous inlaid heart pendant here with the turquoise and sodalite. I love this one so much. I think it's so pretty. Um, just a beautiful statement there. So I got that one. Let's see, are we done with the mine finds? I think I'm done with the mine finds. Okay, what is this one? Uh, okay, so another brand, so for me, like I said, he had a lot of Nolan Miller jewelry and for me, Nolan Miller jewelry hasn't been selling quite as well as it used to. Um, so I, I stayed away from the Nolan Miller jewelry and what he did have that does sell quite well for me is uh, Carolyn Pollock Relios. So Carolyn Pollock, you know, um, sells on Q QVC and she does Southwestern style jewelry. Uh, so I'll go through some of those pieces. I picked up this ring right here and this is Karen Pollock Relios. It's very pretty. Um, I think it's Amazonite. I haven't gotten around to listing that one yet, but you can see it definitely has kind of that Southwestern vibe to it. I got this pendant here, and um, this one's really pretty with the red sponge coral um, and just a huge kind of um, bail on this. So you can really wear this with a variety of necklaces, enhancer style, spiny oyster on there as well. Really nice inlaid kind of work on there. So I got that piece. And then I got this one, which yeah, what I had written down. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Carolyn Pollock Lapis Bench Bead. I don't. I don't know if I wrote this down. Um, I forget what stone this is, but I think some kind of jasper. I want to say like a desert jasper, picture jasper, something like that. Um, but beautiful setting on this. 
really nice heavy rope design. I think her, her jewelry is so well made and I think that's why she has such a following um, because it pulls in those southwestern kind of componentry that people like about you know that style of jewelry and it's just very quality made. Like I said, very heavy sterling on this, beautiful setting. You can see here the setting is just as nice on the inside as it is on the outside. So a uh, gorgeous ring right there, I picked up that one. This one's really exciting. Um, this one is, this one I paid 34 and um, you can see here, this is such a honker. It's huge. This one's got Amazonite. It's got um, lapis lazuli turquoise and I think this might be like a mother of pearl. I think this is spiny oyster, spiny oyster and huge kind of filigree, very elaborate. Look at the back of this thing. Like I said, the thing about Carolyn Pollock is just the quality of her jewelry heavy well-made beautiful elaborate pieces of jewelry these are really heirloom quality and so uh this one here i looked up really quick online there was only one selling on ebay and it was selling for 174 dollars so i thought that that was a great one to get um again pay, like, like i said paid up just a little bit but uh, i think i'll be able i'm already selling quite a few of these pieces so you know that always is good it always reinforces you to know that um what you picked up people want and uh, this one's 25 and this is also Carolyn Pollock Relios and this is a big carved carnelian pendant and the bale opens up on this one, I think, let me see. Yes, the bale opens on this one. And so, uh, which is great because you can put this, really if you have a very chunky necklace and it doesn't fit over the bale, this one just like it opens up and so that's really convenient so carved carnelian there i don't know what these other stones are we got mother of pearl i don't know what these stones are they're beautiful though it's a gorgeous piece nice kind of cross motif i like a cross motif in terms of sales always does very well more of like a, almost like a maltese cross format there on that one so I thought that was also fabulous like I said I was just sticking kind of like with the Carolyn Pollock pieces and the you know J King mine finds just knowing that they're the ones that will always kind of like do well um I picked up this bench bead necklace <clears throat> this one was 30. I had actually sold this exact necklace um, back in December for $200. And so this one is a 22 inch length and you can see it's a stamped bench bead style. Uh, you know, the bench beads, Native American, these are typically made by hand. Um, and this one is brand new. The one I sold in December did have a little bit of wear to it. This one just looks absolutely brand new. And um, these are the typical kind of tube end caps that you'll see on bench bead necklaces. And this is just great. This is just a beautiful design. Um, so this one's currently listed. I, am, I was getting a lot of offers on it today. Unfortunately, they were all very low ball offers. So we'll have to see what happens. But I think there's a, a couple of watchers on it. So we'll have to see how that unfolds. And then another Carolyn Pollock Relios. This is just a sodalite beaded necklace with some sterling silver beads in between. And then it has a really pretty kind of centerpiece here in the middle and sterling silver. And so all her jewelry, obviously sterling silver and precious stones, kind of a very similar vibe again to J. King Mine Finds, but much more with that Southwestern sensibility. So I got that guy. That one was actually pretty cheap. I want to say that was like 15 bucks. And uh, what else? What else? What else? Finally, I'm going to go two more P. Oh, you know what? I have a little bit more here. Hold on a sec. <laughs> I have a couple more pieces. Um, again, if you're if you're if you've looked on QVC in the past, then you should be familiar with this designer. This is Nikki Butler, and Nikki Butler is very well known for doing kind of these like, you know, Indian, Turkish, Asian inspired motifs in his jewelry. Uh, this one collection he did is the Raj collection, um, and so it's very collectible. Uh, and so when I show you this, you may recognize the style. So this is a beautiful ring and it's got um, kind of like what, a, what we would call like a low grade corundum or a low grade ruby. So that's what these are, beautiful faceted rubies. And then we have some faceted amethysts. And um, I'm going to say that those are maybe like a Madeira garnet. The orangey red ones look like garnets to me. Uh, I'll have to look that up a little bit. Pretty sure that's what it is though. <coughs> Excuse me. And then back here is always just as pretty, well-made rings. They're gorgeous. 
And so that one looks like that. That was this. These rings were both twenty-five dollars. Heavy, well-made, beautiful, very distinguishable, very collectible. <coughs> Excuse me. And so similarly, this again, low-grade corundum. Corundum family is inclusive of rubies and also emeralds. And so these are just um, lower grade kind of emeralds. And you can see they're the one in the center is clouded. <clears throat> and uh, when you're paying for high quality emeralds as a precious stone, the better clarity they have more like a Colombian emerald, that's where you're going to get into more money. And so these, you know, probably sourced from India. Um, just gorgeous though. Gorgeous, gorgeous ring. I love the look of it. It's fabulous, it's big, it's statement-y. And so I got those two Nikki Butler pieces. I haven't gotten around to listing those. And then, you know, there were like random vendors there, of course. And so some of them had some lower priced pieces, uh, bags, you know, the bins, kind of like bin scenarios, just mountains and mountains of jewelry for you to go through. And that's always fun, I think, because that's like where the real treasure hunting always happens. And so one vendor, I got this one for $5, and this was in like one of those bins, and this is really pretty, this gold tone. Big bezel set crystals, and then we've got crystal um, crystal kind of faceted pieces in between. This is gorgeous, and this is, if you ever come across this brand, it's signed JBK, and that's uh, Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy and Cam Cameron and Cross. Cameron and Cross did this collection um, of J Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy inspired jewelry and so also very collectible this piece um, currently you can see here the, the tag just looks like this it says just JBK on it um, great quality very heavy well-made jewelry um, and I love this design it's almost like got that diamonds by the yard look to it um, fabulous piece and there's a currently one of these on eBay for $79 so uh, the one on eBay that's going for that is in the box kind of with the tags, everything's still attached to it. Um, but yeah, I think I should be able to get a good amount for that one as well, just given the fact that I didn't pay too much money for it. And then um, from another vendor, uh, I got this sterling silver kind of modernist ring and she, she just had this in one of her trays like sitting there and she, she charged me like $10 for it. I got two sterling silver rings from her. The other one I'm keeping, I put it, put it aside for myself, but uh, I just love this one. I would keep this for myself too. It's just a, a very small size um, because I love the kind of abstract flower modernist design aesthetic of it. I think it's super cool and it's actually very heavy, very well made ring, very nice. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take my silver polish and, and get in there a little bit and see if I can find a hallmark because this really does to me have like a very almost Danish modernist sensibility to it. So I want to just make sure I really do my diligence with this and uh, see if I I can, you know, look at it and just make sure that, uh, you know, it doesn't have a stamp on it so that I price it accordingly when I do go to resell it. Um, so that's a lot of what I got, you guys. Um, jewelry for today, in case you're wondering, uh, uh, this is just a celluloid piece. Celluloid um, manufactured originally in Japan and made to look like coral jewelry. Uh, or ivory jewelry um, and so this one I love is Art Deco and uh, this is what it looks like it's just got a very simple kind of like brass framing there but I love this one so much I like how large it is and so uh, you'll find celluloid bangle bracelets as well that kind of look hard very similarly um, I like the level of detail on this one <clears throat> I like that it looks like lily flowers and so that one that's definitely a fave. And that's just my Mo Monet gold tone bracelet. Um, so yeah, you guys, that's everything. And um, I'm so happy to kind of uh, be back here and just, you know, sharing some of my jewelry fun with you guys. Uh, it's definitely been a while. I miss chatting with so many of you and I definitely miss, <laughs> you know, having to celebrate and share fun jewelry finds with you all since we all have a passion for this. Um, so thank you so much. And, you know, give me a like on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already if you're interested in some of these items you can always email me my email address is down below in the description and my ebay store is nola collectibles so thank you so much you guys and i'll see you at the next one bye